Yeah. Call in. And Sin just uh, might have yeah. to call him here. Told myself not to do this unless I was gonna call. Right. How's it going YouTube? Welcome to Andreas Frilly Poker. On this channel I bring you poker strategy and poker news and in this hand I'm gonna have a look at the 2018 WCP main event in the heads up between Sin and Miles and what went down in this crazy hand. Watch until the end of this video to find out how these hands should be played correctly but now let's have a look at what Sin and Miles did in this hand. Wow. Miles is for sure betting. I can only guess. Eleven. All right, now, Sin, what are you going to do? Twelve million. The last time you had a flush draw, you just called and it got you in trouble. Now with straight and flush draws. Yep. Different story. Tony, how much do you have behind? He's thinking about just moving it in. One thirty-four. Thank you. Pretty close. Yep. You can see the chips behind on his graphic. Twelve million. Does he have to put the chips in? That was a question. <laughs> <laughs> I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, I just don't want to make a misstep, but his aggression level is just a little bit under what it should be. We saw him check raise with the 10-8 a while back and then just not call when his opponent moved in. I'm sure his rail told him that they didn't love that play. Now he finds himself with a much better hand even. thing is, if he raises that amount, he's getting called. Maybe another stack? I mean, I'm not an advocate of moving all in here personally, but. We're looking at. A pot size bet here? Raise 32 million. Miles has been c-betting every single board in this heads up almost so it makes a lot of sense for Sin to go ahead and check raise here with the seven of hearts he has a gut shot and a flush draw and there's a high chance that Miles has actually missed this board and you want to go in, in this shallow you want to go ahead and check raise and then probably shove a lot of the turn cards that you think your opponent cannot call um, with his holding most of the time. seen some strange stuff happen in the main event sometime. Can you imagine if they got it all in with seven high <laughs> after this flop? <laughs> what if the six played to win the world championship? The running deuce three, he wins with seven, six high. I'd be embarrassed to take the picture with this, you know. <laughs> we have seen the chips go in in weird fashions, particularly after long battles. How about P.S. Hines that year? My goodness. I mean, P.S. Hines just moved in with ace-queen on a king-10 board. The other guy had a straight and a flush draw. Queen-9. It turned out he was in bad shape. Still shaking my head. Well, this indicates that he's going to keep playing. Oh, just wanted to count his, his own wager. Here's Sean Dean in his head. Move in. Move That's in. What, just what Be I was aggressive. wondering if. Be aggressive. I mean. Move in. 
All in. Yeah. All in. Vincent uh, just might have yeah. to call him here. This shelf is clearly over the line. When you have 7-6 here, you know, you're not blocking any of the check raises for value. In fact, you're probably going to check raise some of the bluffs, uh, even though you're not holding, for example, the 7 of hearts of the 6 of hearts, which would be bad cards for you to have, because you would be blocking not only some, you know, very strong combo draws that he could have, but also a lot of check raise bluffs, like, you know, for example, a 9 with a 7 with a 7 of hearts. Now, you know, when you're shoving here with a 7-6, you mainly get called by all the two pairs that check raised you in this spot the 8-5, the queen-8, the queen-5, and also, you know, when your opponent has a flush or he has you dominated in equity a lot of the times, let's imagine your opponent has a 7-6 of hearts and he's just free rolling you for all the chips. This is not what you want to do. You want to go ahead and call here and see whether your opponent, you know, checks some turns that are not up for him, or sometimes he is going to jam into your, you know, mate straight on the turn where you can easily find a call. I told myself not to do this unless I was going to call. Right. Can I get a real count, please? Miles. So he already anticipated Good. the potential of an all-in. And he had said, I'm going to call if he goes all-in. He really now. He really can't fold. I mean, it's just, he, this pot's too big now. He has a straight to flush draw. It's just really hard. I mean, this is, this is going to be one of the, let's just see how much more is it. Respective families on pins and needles. One thirteen five more. Sin with straight and flush draws. A six or a heart makes his hand. Wow, I can't believe it's gonna come down to this. Maybe. Well, you know, Sin could have raised forty million, and he might have just won the spot. That's an old school raise, Look. folks. And it's a call. Wow, here we go. Seven high is good. The chips are in. Oh, my God. Tony Miles with the best hand at the moment. Sin favored to win this hand after the flop. Am I missing something, or could this be a chop? Split yeah, well, it definitely could be. Yeah. Well, you can see the percentages up there, 42. I mean, 31. they're definitely, maybe feel better with just big cards coming out. If that's true, 42 and 31, does that mean that they would chop at 27% of the time? Correct. Wow. Tony Miles, at risk. If a heart comes, it's over. If a six comes. It's still not over. Yeah, if a six comes, it's at least. The straight hit first sin. Is it coming? Norman? Miles has a draw to a higher straight. Jack, and that helps the chop possibilities. Tony Miles, still good. Wow, an offsuit deucer of three, and he's gonna win with seven, six, no. Is that right? Two sixes or offsuit a Offsuit deucer three, and he wins with seven, six high. <laughs> oh, I've never seen a pot, I've never seen that happen. John Sin could be a world champion if the right card comes down. A huge double up for Tony Miles. If he can fade danger, a chop pot's still a possibility. A six or a heart on the river, and it's John Sin. I like the fact. Title. I like the fact they're sitting next to the him. river card. Is a chap, and they will chop the pot. In just a second, I'm gonna have a look at the peel level solutions of this hand. Let me just tell you guys that uh, you know, if I were in this spot, I wouldn't just play like a like a solver i just couldn't you know in fact when i play hands in poker and live poker i oftentimes go home after you know playing and have a look at what the correct play would have been and just try to learn from that and i think that everyone should be you know doing that after if, if they want to improve because there's no way that you're you're gonna know the right um you know hands right away if you're not continuously working with these solvers I would definitely not go ahead and jam 7-6 off, so here I would have known better that this is not the right play in this situation, but I'm um, almost certainly make mistakes and, you know, sometimes even check raise 7-4 suited against a player who is C-betting the right um, strategy here. But let's have a look at what the solution brings. Let's have a look at how the situation should be played here. We got a queen, eight, five, two hard sport. And once the out of position player checks this range, the in position player should go ahead and bet 41% of his range. What I always find very uh, interesting here is looking at the EVs of the hand. You can see that the best hand that we have is obviously top set. 
And then also we got middle set, which even has a higher AV. Why? Because when you have middle set, your opponent can still have some top pairs. So it actually makes more money to have middle set and bottom set for the in position player in this situation. Now you can already look at the hand of Miles. 7 6 offsuit has um, some EV, but it's, uh, you know, it's not very high. Uh, but we can have a look at what he should be betting. Well, he should be betting 7 6 offsuit about half the time. Once he does, the out of position player check raises some of his hands. You can see that there's a uh, queen 8 suited, 8 5 suited, 8 5 offsuit, all this two pair combination, and then some strong flush draws like 7 6 of hearts. That he should go ahead and check raise. Once he does so, um, the imposition player doesn't shove very many hands. You can see that he shoves some kings, aces, and ace queen offsuit, and then he calls with the majority of his hands, including seven, seven six offsuit. But now you're saying, oh, wait a minute, these are two human players, so why would you use a computer to calculate what is right here? And yes, a solver is only going to be as smart as the person sitting in front of it. So if you're not giving the solver the right, um, you know, parameters, he's not going to give you the solution how you should play in the situation. It's always going to be a decent solution, of course, probably always going to be more decent than how human beings are playing. However, you can even make it better. Let's have a look at how we can adjust the solver so that we have even a better play um, for uh, both players in the situation. Instead of this normal solution, I decided to make an exploitative one, which features Miles, the imposition player, c-betting his entire range. We've seen Miles in the heads up c-betting all the boards with all of his hands 100% of the time. So what you can do is you can see, okay, once the out of position player checks, you can let the imposition player bet with all of his range. And now all of a sudden you can see that Pio Solo will go ahead and check raise bluff half his range on this board because imposition player has such a weak betting range that we can go ahead and attack him very much. So you can see that now 7-4 of hearts on the right here is check raised 83% of the time against this strategy. And also this is why, why I like since check raise here very much. Once you go ahead and check raise and our opponent ships it, we would not go ahead, we would obviously then go ahead and call the 7-4 of hearts and unfold some of our bluffs, for example, uh, check nine with the check of hearts or the nine of hearts would have been one of our check raise bluffs. Um, a cover and a heart is usually a good idea to check raise bluff against somebody over C betting here. And then also, if we want to ask yourselves what, are, uh, what we should do with the seven six, you can see that it would always get called versus such a wide check raising range. And also when you look at the EVs from in position, you can see that 7-6 has a decent EV, but not a very high one. You can see there's so many better hands that you can have in this spot. You can have a top pair, even middle pairs is a stronger. You can see the EVs are around 27. And of course, you can have a hand like Jack 8 of Hearts, who has an extremely high EV against our opponent's strategy here. So this is how you should play the spot. If somebody C bets all the time against you, you can go ahead and check raise seven four of hearts, a gotcha and a flush draw, and then just stack it off versus a shove. Miles shove here with seven six offsuit is super ambitious and um, not at all solver approved. So you should never do that ever against anyone because it's an equity driven board. There's so many flush draws that get featured, and your equity is just way too poor to go ahead and jam here with a seven six offsuit. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button down here if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel and then see you guys for the next one.